Okay guys, we're going to go over the ICT Silver Bullet, the London session for Friday the 19th. It was a messy session, but I want to show you that there are three trade setups. But first, I want to go over my rules and um, just make these uh, go over here and see what plays out. So I use the 2022 mentorship model for the trade setup. I need a higher time frame liquidity needs to be taken. And then I'm looking for a swing high or swing low to be broken for the market structure shift. Looking for displacement that formed the fair value gap or a PD array entry, breaker block, mitigation block, order block. The parameters risk to reward is one to two. So I'll risk, you know, one to gain two uh, and a minimum of at least five handles. That's what ICT teaches us. The stop placement is below the first candle of the fair value gap or above or below the breaker block, mitigation block, or order block. And I need to move the stop to break even at, and take a partials once price reaches 60% of the target. Okay. As you can see, this entire range here is from 12 to 17. So this whole range is five handles. Okay. So it's, it's, it's pretty slim pickings here. Okay. Where do we start? This is the two o'clock. The light gray should start at 2 a.m. The silver bullet hour right here is at three to four. Uh, that's the darker shaded gray area. And then we go on from there. So I want to show you that we have a short term low taken. This is the higher time frame. This would have been the last hour uh, low. And if you go back further, it's actually even higher than that. So it's the whole daily low at the point at this point. Um, so let's go with the first trade setup. So first one, we have this short term low broke broken or higher time frame low broken. And then what else do we see? Well, you can say that we have a market structure shift right here. Okay. And I'm going to do the lines. You can see that there's a, peak there that's your high okay you can just toggle that by clicking on right on the little thing on the top of the screen so there would be a market structure shift and is there a displacement there is right there a fair value gap right here and then where could you have taken your trade well you would have put it you know right here and you would have gone to the below the candle you could have gone higher and moved this one tick below and then you would have gone still for five handles. It would have taken you all the way over here to 4.31 a.m. So you don't get it in this session because the whole session is five handles. So that's where your first trade would have been. Okay, it would have been two and a half, 2.5 R risk to reward ratio. That's what you would have got. A good trade, but it, it, you've got to be quick here. And you got to, these small structures have got to count for you uh, in your trading model. Okay. So I'm going to take that off the screen. We still have, that was trade one. Okay. Trade two, if you still use this, this higher time frame liquidity taken, because you're still there, where's trade two at? Well, you could say, hey, we have market structure shift right here. This is the higher time frame one. Came up, time up, down, hot. It's relatively equal highs. They get taken. There's displacement right there. And you would have, you would have taken your trade right here. As it came back down, take your trade and go up. So this would have been where your trade was. And guess what? You lost. This was a loser because there's your, your trade. It fits your criteria. So if this was your criteria, it, this is my rules. I take this right on the chin, this loss, and move on because it met my, met my rules. Higher time frame was taken. Swing high was broken. Was there displacement? Yes. Fair value gap. Can I risk one to two? Yeah, I'm actually going one to four. I mean, it's like one and a quarter from the bottom of this. You can go to the bottom of here if you wanted to, but the rules, I use the smallest one, one tick below the, the, the first candle per my rules, right? Displacement form, stop placing below the first candle of fair value gap. That's where I put it. And you know what? It just continued to go and took me out. But let me, let me tell you something to consider. And through my back testing, I've noticed this. Uh, this is not a rule or an ICT law of any kind, uh, as people like to say. But I've noticed that when there's a volume imbalance in the opposite the direction of that I don't want to go, 
I, I, I tend to pay more attention to that because that tells me that the market is trying to go somewhere fast. And when I see this and it's coming down, I pre, in my back testing, I don't take that trade. I see how it plays out first. Now, if I miss it, I miss it. But reason for that is because what do we have here? We have some sell side liquidity right here, relatively equal lows right here. So they're trying to go fast. There's another volume imbalance right here after it took out, getting ready to take us out. Okay. Another volume imbalance. So they're get going somewhere quick. And you know, what is, what does ICT say? If you miss three PD rays, uh, go against you, get out of the trade immediately. Well, there's one volume imbalance. There's a fair value gap that I was entering in. And there's another volume imbalance. And when it opened here and just went straight down, I needed to get out of that trade and save some of my capital. And what did it do? It took out the sell, the, the sell side liquidity and then came right to eat these lows right here. So that was a lot. That was a loser. One went first trade was a winner. Second trade's a loser. Let's take this, this one off here. Is there another trade? Sure. Here, I want to show you that after that broke through that trade, we have some sell side liquidity relatively equal lows right here. So you got to be paying attention to that. You're thinking, okay, it likes to trade through those. So be careful. Maybe this is to the downside. Or maybe it's just generating liquidity, right? So then you see, you know, a huge vol uh, fair value gap right here. Could you have traded that in there? Yeah, you could have. Uh, right there. If you wanted to, I'll change make that the color of my fair value gap. There's that one. So price comes up, creates this fair value gap, stops, doesn't take out this high, and then comes back down, doesn't take out this low, this or, or these relatively equal lows. Price just stops. The bodies tell the story. They stop right perfectly there. One wick goes down, one tick, and that's it. The market is telling you it doesn't really want to go down right now. So you're still, you know, you're still bullish. What do you see? You have a fair value gap. Could you have entered here? Yes, you could have. Uh, but then you, let's see what else you see. You see a market structure shift here. Still taking out a swing high, a swing high. You see another fair value gap right here. Fair value gap. But what else is in that fair value gap? You have a volume imbalance right here. You have another volume imbalance right here and a fair value gap right there. So you have a whole bunch of PD rays in this section right here and on top of this in, inside this bigger one. Okay. So where would you have taken your trade? You could have entered right here at the top of this, which is so all these PD rays are supporting price. And where would you have gone? Let me move this out of the way here. You took your trade. It was 3.51 a.m. The price does come back, returns, but where does the body stop on this one? At the bottom of that fair value gap. And where does it go? To the middle of this consequent encroachment of that fair value gap. And then you take your trade. Again, that's outside the 4 o'clock window. We did get a setup right here. So five handles. It's a 2.86 R trade and that's your third trade of a very choppy London session following our rules we had one two winners and one loser